So far in chapters 8, 9, and 10, we were only working with single means or single proportions for all of our inferences. But in chapter 11, we're going to move past that into comparing two population parameters. So we're going to compare two proportions, for example, in section 11.1, or two means in section 11.2 and 11.3. Now before we get into that though, we need to talk about the types of sampling we're going to see. Because understanding the types of sampling you're going to see will help you determine which section you're in and what problems you have to do. What type of confidence interval or hypothesis test question you need to answer. So there's two main types of sampling. There's independent sampling and dependent sampling. So independent sampling is when the individual selected for one sample do not in dictate the individuals for the second sample. They don't have any relationships. So an easy way to think of that is what I wrote down here. It's like a quick little reference, a rule of thumb, which is that independent samples are two independent groups, separate groups. Right? That's what I mean by independent there. Two separate groups that are measured one time. So if you measure two separate groups once, that's independent sampling. And they, the groups should be separate. They should be unrelated. Now, dependent sampling, that's a different story. Because dependent sampling is when the two groups are related, right? So much so that we call them one group, right? So it's when you have one group measured twice. Now, that's a little squishier because it could be one group in terms of being just a single group of individuals. But it could also be one group in terms of they, they're they not separate. They have a relationship. So this would be unrelated groups. Right? That's what I mean by separate. Unrelated groups that are separate. My pen has been dying there. And then over here, we would have not unrelated. So in other words, they're related groups. Now, they can be related in a couple different ways. They can be related in terms of it could be just one group, right? Pre and post. That's what I put right here, pre, post, or before and after. That's literally one group of people. So it could be pre, post. It could be before and after. But it could also be uh, siblings. They're a related group. So having one sibling's, let's say, reaction time. So we, we get the older sibling, we, we measure their reaction time, then the younger siblings, that, that sample's automatically dictated, right? They're related. It's one group of of people and being measured twice. It's just that the people are related to each other. That's what makes them one group. So by one group, what we mean is they're either the same people or they're related people. Well, I shouldn't say they're people. I mean, they could. you could do this with tigers. <laughs> you could do it with, you know, polar bears. So I'm just going to say either the same individuals which would be same individuals be this pre post before and after that's same or they could be related so spouses counts right so if, if they're married then that would count they're related right even if it's relation by choice so just so everybody can see same would be things like this right one literally the same person both before and after whereas um, related would be things like siblings, spouses, that kind of stuff. Either one counts, right? They both count as one group measured twice. All right, so let me give you some more examples here. So for an independent sample, we have a group of students. Let's say a group of students. So let me put that right here. And to make it so that they're independent, how about we have a group of MSU students and we have a group of Jackson College students, right? So we have a random group of each, right? And then I can measure things from them. So for example, I could want to know their credit hours, right? So credit hours from both groups. 
they're two separate groups and then I measure the credit hours from them. Right? Two separate groups measured once. Um, for a dependent sample, um, I could take a group of students it could be JC students, it could be whatever, and I'm going to measure um, some response before and after. So let's say before the semester they thought this, but after the semester was over they thought this. Right? So that's before and after. So that's one group measured twice. So let me give you another example. So that's an example one. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of sneak it in there. Right, so this is example one. But let me give you another example, so I, because I want to give you a siblings example here. So I could take um, a random group of uh, men and a random group of women. And just for some variety, when I was asking them about credit hours, you'll notice credit hours is a quantitative variable. Let me just put that in here. These were quantitative variables that I was asking. And I didn't actually mention what this was. So this could have been, you know, before or after, but I didn't put that in, so I didn't say what it was. But let me give you a qualitative variable. So what if I asked about um, their relationship status? Relationship status. All right, so this is example two right here in purple. Well, the relationship status is a qualitative variable. You know, so if I ask, you know, are you married? Are you not? That kind of thing. That would be qualitative. So I'd be asking the men their relationship status and the women their relationship status. So this is independent because they're two separate groups and I'm asking their relationship status. As opposed to over here, let me take um, a group of spouses. So I have one group of spouses and I ask them, for example, um, marital satisfaction, right? So I ask the husbands, or I, well, I shouldn't say that, uh, let me just say spouse one, satisfaction in the marriage. Let me do it that way. And then spouse two, satisfaction in the marriage. So this is qualitative, what I'm asking here. Right? How satisfied are you? Right? Okay, so they could be spouses, like this. So this is example two. Or they could be just one group of people before and after. Both things count. So over on the left we have independent, over on the right we have dependent. Now the other thing to keep in mind is I was trying to make a little distinction here just to kind of help us out. Quantitative things will be things that we'll test with the means. So when we get into section 11.2 and 11.3 that will be quantitative stuff, numbers. Qualitative stuff is section 11.1. This will be proportions. So if I say, you know, are you married, yes or no, they would answer with a yes or no, so that's a qualitative thing, and we convert that into proportions. So qualitative gets worked on with proportions. Quantitative gets worked on with means. And I'm not going to label this one because I never specified what it was. <laughs> if it was um, credit hours at the start of the semester and credit hours at the end of the semester, that would be quantitative. But it was if it was satisfaction with the college before and satisfaction with the college after, that's qualitative. So it depends on what you're asking. So I've primed the pump here for a little example that we can go through. So we want to um, figure out whether the following are independent and or dependent, right, for the sampling method. And we also want to determine whether the response variable is qualitative or quantitative, because qualitative will mean proportions. And quantitative will mean means. Everything we've done since chapter eight is either proportions or means. <laughs> so those are the two big tents that we have to figure out.
All right, so we conduct a survey of 100 random men and 100 random women to find out which um, was their favorite summer Olympic sport to watch on television. Okay, well that's two separate groups, right? These are 100 random men and 100 random women. So that's two separate groups. Two separate groups. All right, measured once, obviously. Because we just asked them, you know, what's your favorite Olympic sport to watch? So that would be independent. So we know it's one of these two. So it's either independent quantitative or independent qualitative. But when I say to the person, what's your favorite sport? They're not going to answer with a number. They're going to answer with a word. That's qualitative. It's this one. So if you're interested, that's section 11.1. Right, that'll be proportions that we're working with. Could be a confidence interval, could be a hypothesis test. You don't know which um, question you're being asked, but suffice to say it'll be one of those. All right, now we conduct a poll of 100 random men and 100 random women to find out whether they like watching Olympic sports or not. We first call them the day before the Olympic Games start, and then we conduct a follow-up call afterwards. Ah, so this is a before and after. Because we're calling them the day before and the day after, it seems at first like it's going to be independent, but it isn't. That's just one big group right here. This is one big group. And it's measured before and after. And that means that it's dependent again. It's dependent but it's qualitative because it's saying, did you like watching the, the Olympics, yes or no? That's a yes, no question. Yes, no is qualitative, right? That's not quantitative. So that means it's proportions. It's this one right here, which is actually chapter 12. We're not going to do those, <laughs> not in this course right now. I mean, unless we tack on chapter 12 at some point. So that is not in this, it's not in this chapter. Let me put it that way. Dependent qualitative, we don't work on in chapter 11. But I wanted you to be aware that it exists. All right, now let's look down here. A researcher wants to know if basketball or soccer players weigh more. A random sample of male college basketball players and a random sample of male college soccer players were obtained and weighed. When the results are, then the results are compared. Okay, well, that's two separate groups again. Right? So we have a random sample of male college basketball players and co male college soccer players, and they didn't measure them before and after. It's not saying before the season and after the season. It's just two separate groups, right? So we have, again, two separate groups, two separate groups, and we're measuring separate groups, and we're measuring the weight. The weight one time <laughs> once okay so two separate groups will be independent again so it's going to be independent one of these two but since you're measuring weight weight is a measurement in pounds that's quantitative right that's something from a science class so that means it's this one which is going to be section 11.3 All right, well, you can imagine what the next one's going to be because there's one section we haven't done yet, but that's all right. So a researcher collects um, data showing the heart rates, which is in beats per minute, for a random sample of coffee drinkers before and after. There it is, before and after they drink coffee. Well, that's dependent, right? Before and after is dependent. Okay, so we know it's before and after, that's um, <laughs> one group measured twice. Okay, so I know it's dependent, so it's either this one or this one. But heart rate, heart rate is a quantitative thing, right? It's, again, it has a unit attached to it, right? BPM is quantitative. 
something we would measure in a science class, which means it's got to be this one, which I should have written that right here. This is quantitative. I we my end got weird there. <laughs> quantitative. So this last one you can imagine is section 11.2. And now you see that the problem, the way it's set up, will dictate what type of thing you're able to do. If it's independent and quantitative, you're going to be in section 11.3. If it's a before and after, you're going to be in section 11.2, because this section is in chapter 12, and we're not covering that right now. And then if it's proportions, if it's a qualitative thing, it's going to be section 11.1, because we'll be doing independent qualitative items.